going to repeat the practice of uh, metta. When we practice metta towards others, they feel friendly towards us. When we are friendly towards them, they are friendly towards us. There always is this kind of a reciprocal behavior. When we are friendly with others, we normally don't betray our friends and they don't betray us. When we are friendly, we are very sympathetic towards them and they are sympathetic towards us. When we are friendly, we don't try to find faults in others. They don't find faults in us. There always is this kind of interdependent relationship in a most wholesome way when we practice metta. At the same time when we practice metta towards others, we don't do anything harmful to them. And they don't harm us. When we practice metta towards ourselves, we don't harm ourselves, we don't do things to hurt us. We don't think to hurt us. We don't say to hurt us. Similarly, when we are friendly with others, our thoughts, words and deeds always are friendly. This not only in jhana meditation, even outside jhana, in just normal, ordinary social, social interaction with others, we have the benefit of loving friendliness. It is much more so in our practice of meditation. Once we learn to develop it within our mind and fill the mind, condition the mind with loving, friendly thought, its benefits last for a long time. And this is why the practice of metta is very important. Whether we practice met loving frame, uh, tranquility meditation or insight meditation, it's a very powerful training. In fact, when we look at the practical side of Buddha's teaching, it's filled with the thought of metta. Everything he taught us with metta. Every deed he did to console us was filled with metta. And therefore, as the meditation practice, it brings us peace, comfort, joy and happiness and concentration. And as an ordinary practice, outside meditation, it brings us 
peaceful, relaxed, comfortable feeling with other persons. When we, we practice metta towards us and others, we always feel secure, comfortable, knowing that we can trust them. They trust us if we practice metta sincerely, without any ulterior motive, then we can trust each other. We can trust one another. And it has a special quality. We learn to be very <coughs> honest and sincere with each other, trusting each other when we practice metta. We have no fear when we have metta, no fear of anger or hatred. When we are full of metta, others who do not have, cannot direct their hatred towards us. It would simply be repelled and it won't affect us. And this kind of protection we get from the practice of metta. Using metta as a jhana subject is very powerful. It brings quick results quick concentration. At the beginning it is difficult to cultivate, but when we keep doing it again and again it becomes easy, just like anything else. Anything at the beginning that we are not familiar with would be difficult. We all have the seed of metta in us because of our orientation and conditioning. We don't see that. It is hidden under the weight of conditioning. And when we relax, those and remove those conditioning slowly, temporarily, we allow this hidden metta seed to grow. And we can see it unfolding itself within ourselves. Friends, we cannot ask others to give us metta. Out of their own generosity, they might give metta to us. They might be friendly. But primarily, we have to cultivate within ourselves. We initiate metta in us so that others will learn from us. It is so comfortable, so beautiful, and as I, as I said, it is healing power. You can make decision with metta. Whenever you make a decision on any issue with anger, biases, confusion, the decision is not going to benefit you or others. Even if it is very rational, 
without uh, component or moisture of metta, the decision will become just mechanical. When we make a decision with metta, you can see the results. That is why whenever the Buddha made a decision, whenever he solved a problem, that solution came always from the place of metta in his heart. Even when very cruel, wicked persons feel very affectionate towards the Buddha, love the Buddha, because his decision, even for wicked persons, came from the place of loving friendliness. You may not find it easy to do, but through constant practice you find it, it becomes easy. Whether we, whether we speak in front of somebody or in their absence, if we speak with friendly, loving, friendly attitude, we can find something good in that person to speak about. It is very difficult for someone whose mind is filled with metta to criticize others unfairly. Metta practice primarily affects our own personality, entire personality. And we practice it for our own benefit. We practice for our own benefit with the intention of influencing others with metta. Generally, people try to influence others with pride, arrogance, show off, greed, and so forth, with a competitive attitude. But that is not going to be an effective way of influencing others. But we, if we influence others with metta, there is no ulterior motive. We don't expect anything from them. We just be friendly. And any sincere person honest person with right mind can feel that metta in us and they respond according to our metta. Any difficult situation can make easy if we practice metta. If we have, if we do not have metta, even easy situation can become very difficult. So the practice of metta is not limited only to the cushion, but it has 
effect on our life in daily activities. Cultivate metta first and pervade an entire universe with this thought of metta. Without thinking of any particular individual, as we mentioned, just imagine that the world is filled with metta. This air is filled with metta. Heat is filled with metta. There is a fire in us, fire of greed, hatred, delusion, fire of fear, tension, anxiety, worry, fire of jealousy, fire of competition, fire all kind of fires. And this soothing balm of metta can put out these fires in us. So when we practice metta, we determine to fill our mind with these thoughts of metta, to reduce our own fires, internal fires, that we all are burning from day to day, every day. And then out of that cool, calm place in our heart and mind, we wish ourselves to be peaceful and happy, and then wish this entire surrounding entire environment, the air, elements, all beings, everything, everywhere is charged with this friendly feeling. It is not very difficult to do. If we relax, if we don't assume anything, don't expect anything, just mere thought is not very difficult to cultivate. It's a thought. It is an imagination. It is a will. It's a commitment. With this will, commitment, imagination, if we charge our minds with this friendly thought, friendly feeling, that has remarkable effect on our life and the life of others whom we are associating with. And therefore, friends, use this metta as the basis for your jhana meditation. And this has the necessary power, power of metta, combined with power of concentration, samadhi bala, to heal the scar of wounds of fire, anger, hatred, and so forth. This has a wonderful healing power. So stay with this metta as long as you can and slowly move on to 
initial application of thought, sustained application of thought, confidence, joy, happiness, and concentration. Each of these necessarily follow the other until we gain that absorption concentration. Don't stay anything short of that. <laughs>